guys, welcome to part five of my vlog series outlining the build of this Viking sword. So, um, as you guys have seen, it isn't really like a how-to of what I'm doing, or really a step-by-step -step guide. This is just a vlog, really, progressing the, uh, the updates as I go, and sort of keeping up to date of where I'm at with the project. So last time we were looking at the the sword was done with the grinder, it was up to a hand sanding stage, and I decided not to do that quite yet because I've been doing a lot of work on the uh, lower guard, so the guard that attaches to the bottom of the, the sword, so when you're holding the handle like this, the one that goes here, uh, and where that interacts with the bottom, and I was going to be putting it on, taking it off, putting it on, taking it off, and I didn't want to cause scratches on my nice hand sanded finish for that, so I'm actually saving that process until later. So for now, I've been working on the phenomenally complex guard, and this is probably the probably the most complex part of the build. Um, maybe the pommel will be. We'll see. We'll have to see about that. Um, but for now, it's it's pretty complex. So I've been carrying it around with me a lot because I really like looking at it. <laughs> it came out really, really nicely. Um, because you can see there's the twisted silver wire inlay. With the brass spacer, Damascus steel, and uh, that is the part that will sit like that when you hold it. And remember, I have phenomenally large hands, but Viking swords uh, handles were actually not that big. They were fairly small in the compared to something like a an English longsword or something like that. They were a fairly stout, small sword, um, and the handles were no exception. Uh, some of them were bigger than others, depending on what era they came from, and the locality, and the maker, etc. But this is pretty indicative of the size that you would see for one. And um, a lot of detail has been crammed into that very small piece. So this vlog is almost entirely centered on just this one piece. So let's go over to my uh, detail station, and we'll have a closer look at what actually went into this, and what comprised... Uh, what comprises this guard? Because there actually are seven pieces here. <laughs> no, actually, well, technically, no. Technically, there's nine pieces here, but um, that's getting a bit nuanced. So let's take a look at this closer up, and you can see why this took me uh, probably five days of work just for this one piece. So here we are. Here we have the guard, and you can see there's a lot going on here, but... It is pretty accurate, and I'm very proud about this, is pretty accurate to my original sketch that you may remember from the first video, uh, which I'll put up in here. So, the twisted silver wire, the brass spacer in the middle, uh, and the Damascus fitting. Now, the reason this particular piece was so complex was because of this shape here, because on my guard, the blade actually goes down inside the guard. Uh, and on the final thing, I'm actually going to flood this void with black resin um, just to create a completely seamless waterproof uh, fit up because I want this piece to last as long as possible. Um, but all of this is pretty much as snug as anything fit to the, the handle aside from this. Um, but yeah, it's just part of the look that I want to go for. But this is despite looking like a, a solid piece, is still not completely affixed together. You have this top piece. You have the bottom piece. You have the alignment pins. And you have the brass liner, which these pieces of twisted wire, actually two pieces of wire each, that have been twisted around, being sure to make sure the twist stays perfectly even, so it's not more twisted in one part than any other part. The entire thing, you could check it with a caliper, it is perfectly even. So there's two pieces of wire on that side, two pieces of wire on that side, twisted together. Small holes have been drilled into the ends here, and it's fitted in there, wrapped very tightly, and then fitted back into a hole on the other side locking it in perfectly that's now in there that's just part of that piece uh, and i've had to because these only fit together perfectly in one particular orientation and you'll see right up here there's two little um 
center punch marks there, and on this side, there's one. And on this piece here, there's one center punch mark. And on this piece here, there's two center punch marks. So I can actually know right away that if I drop in that alignment pin, drop in that alignment pin, and put one to one, and then two to two, it will all snap together perfectly. And it saves a lot of time marking that out. And then, of course, the Damascus, which I kind of etched live almost. I started the etch process because it's really cool. I'll put that up here as well. It's really cool. You can see as I put it into the ferric chloride solution, it's actually, um, it looks like solid, smooth steel. And then you see the acids start to eat and eat and eat. And then after a while, it looks like this and you can start seeing it. But then that's not, that process isn't over. It then has to be polished uh, and buffed and you rub sort of fine steel wool over it to burnish the edges and um, then of course all the brass needs to be buffed and the silver needs to be buffed so that it shines and catches the light. I cannot stress enough how cameras do not do this justice with how this looks. I could look at this all day long and the funny thing is I have to now make this all over again because there's a guard at the top of the hand and then there'll be another one at the bottom and the one at the bottom is only about that wide it's much shorter probably about an inch shorter uh, and it doesn't have to have this precise diamond shaped hole in it so it should be a little bit less work to do but still it's going it's damascus it still has the brass which um i will say that wire is sitting perfectly in place because a perfect groove was carved which you can kind of see on the ends um, but that groove was carved all the way around the piece for that to sit in. So that groove's got to be carved on the, the other piece. Uh, all the alignment pins have to make it lock together, just like this one does. Uh, and the hole needs to, while it doesn't need to be perfectly precise, it does need to be perfectly in the center. So, uh, yeah, that's my, uh, not my next direct next task, but, uh, it will be coming up soon. Uh, my next direct task is going to be working with the wooden handle. Let me just grab that. This piece of Otway Blackwood is going to be what the handle is made from. And if you look closely, it's very hard to capture on camera, but the surface is highly chatoyant, which means it sort of has a 3D effect uh, as it changes in the light. Now, this is fiddlebacked on all four sides. It is exquisite. Absolute gem of a piece of wood. Beautifully donated by Ryan at Otway Fiddleback. I have enough material here to... I don't have enough to do to have two goes this way. But I may this way. So, if you'll remember... I made up a mock-up of the handle, and that's that's the size it's going to be. It fits perfectly in the hand. That's the size and shape that it's going to be. And it's almost exactly as wide as this piece of wood. So if I put it this way, I can actually fit two of them. So I've got to split this perfectly down the middle, and then I get two goes, two attempts to make exactly this handle shape. Um, the only thing that the uh, the final one will have, this one does not, is what's called an heirloom fit. So all of this is going to be rounded over perfectly so that when it butts up against the handle, it sort of, the bottom of that, the metal rounds down into a, a groove and then the top of the handle is going to round down into a groove. So gone will be this pale sassafras temporary handle and replaced with this beautiful, although it'll be oiled, so it'll be more like that, um, fiddle-backed blackwood handle. So that's my next task, because I'm, I'm doing this as you would assemble the sword. So I've done the blade. The next thing that goes under the blade is the lower guard, um, or upper guard, or whatever you want to call it. I know it's technically called the lower guard, but who cares? Um, so all of the pieces for that had to be made, which is this, and this is now done. Now I need to make this, which will go into here. And once that's done, I'll do the final one of these, 
which is an inch shorter, but just as thick. Uh, and then finally will be the pommel assembly. Uh, once the pommel assembly is done, I'll hand sand the sword and we can assemble it together. So the assembly is going to be a threaded tang construction. However, it won't be threaded tang for the sake of being able to dismantle it. This sword is going to be sealed tight forever to stay sealed. You won't be able to disassemble it when it's done. The uh, alignment pins that go into the inside of that uh, the upper guard, the one, the small one that goes here, the alignment pins won't be hidden entirely inside this. You won't see them from the top, but they will extend out the bottom. So out of the bottom of that, you'll have two prongs and then the slot where the tang will stick out. The end of that tang is going to be threaded and a nut is going to be able to thread down over the top of that tang, cinching the whole thing down into place. And then there will be a, um, like a hollow on the underside of the pommel that will fit over that nut, thread onto those alignment pins and the whole thing will be able to seal down and then it'll be sealed shut. And that will be the entire piece. Uh, and the weight, given the weight of just that um, lower guard, when the upper guard's done and the pommel's done, uh, and that nice dense blackwood handle, that should bring the balance point right down to about six inches in front of the guard, uh, if my math is right. Uh, which should make the sword feel incredibly light. It's a funny phenomenon, adding weight to a sword to make it feel lighter. But um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing how it goes. It was a solid five days of work just to do that one guard fitting. Um, but I'm very happy with, well, that's, that's just the finishing work on it. Actually, if you include making the Damascus and getting preparing all the materials and things, then it's a lot more than five days. But yeah, it's interesting seeing it coming together as close to my original plan as possible. So far, the only change to the original plan was a deliberate removal because I felt that it was not preserving the clean aesthetic of the sword. So, yeah, it's uh, it's been a hoot. Uh, this thing has become precious to me. I've been carrying this, this guard around everywhere. Once it's all um, put together, it's going to be hard to hand this over, but hand it over, I will. It's, it's for a very special occasion, and I don't want to ruin it, so... Um, I have a long line of people who have been, uh, who live around here that have been watching me slave away on this thing and have demanded to be able to see it before it disappears. So it'll be getting a small tour of Tasmania <laughs> before it goes. Um, but yeah, next, uh, vlog I will do, I'll do after the handle and the upper guard are finished, uh, and we'll talk about the pommel. So you'll actually get to see the handle fully assembled on the actual sword. So um, guard here, wooden handle, guard here, and then the blade, which will be quite cool. Um, and then we'll discuss the finial of how that's um, going to go. The pommel is going to be a lot of work. Not going to be complex work, but it's going to be a lot of work because of the mass behind it. And the, the mass has to be right to get the balance right. Um, and once that's done, I'll be hand sanding that blade, which luckily is a satin finish, so it's not going to be horrific, um, but it'll still be a lot of work. It's the biggest thing I've ever had to hand sand. Uh, but once it's hand sanded um, and I've etched those names in the blade, it'll be ready for assembly and it'll be done. Um, very exciting. It's been a huge journey to get here, but um, yeah, for my first ever sword, I'm pretty happy with how it's coming along. Hopefully you guys are as well. So um, check out links and things below. Um, check me on social media if you don't follow me there. Huge thank you to my patrons who have um, been very patient with me as I'm <laughs> hammering through this build. Um, it's it's made me have to put other things down to, to actually get, like really get this done. And oddly enough, as, um, at the same time, I'm sort of working on a dagger build, which is the single most complex project I've ever taken on in my life. Um, and so it's making the sword look easy. So that's kind of been motivational, really. <laughs> but uh, yeah, huge thanks to my patrons who are shouted out at the end of my video, as always. Um, and yeah, stick around because part six is going to really start to be looking like a sword. And uh, hopefully you can start seeing the vision. Anyway, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Hope you're all doing well. See you later.